Hey, what's up everybody? Ravi here, and I'm going to be playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in a whole new way using a couple of glitches. First, I'll be playing without time, so the clock will always be stuck at 5.15 a.m. This means no blood moons. All the resources in Hyrule are finite. Every enemy that I kill is going to stay dead. Every weapon that I break is going to permanently be gone. Any ingredients used in foods and elixirs can't be used at the Great Fairy, and vice versa. Fairies are going to be finite, so there's only a certain number of times I can fall off of a cliff or get one hit killed by a Lionel. Fireflies and other creatures that come out at night will not be available. Stall enemies, the, uh, the stall horse side quest will not be possible. Uh, various other side quests including uh, there's a, a Kilton quest uh, for killing all the monsters, killing all of the uh, Hinoxes including uh, the Stalnox. So those side quests just simply won't be possible. Uh, I do have a couple of rules for uh, playing uh, in this mode. Number one is going to be no Master Sword, because if I have a weapon that magically regenerates itself, that kind of defeats the purpose of having finite resources in all of Hyrule. Yes, I'm permitted to use bombs and fight enemies with bombs, uh, and bombs are unlimited, but the reason that's permitted is because, sure, you might fight some wimpy enemies with bombs, you might even knock some bokoblins off into uh, the water or off of the edge of a cliff with bombs, but any kind of serious enemies you're not going to be wanting to fight with bombs. So the second glitch that I'll be using is no towers. Uh, I'm going to be skipping the tower on the Great Plateau, uh, which means there's not going to be any teleportation to towers or shrines. I will also not have a map. I'll have sure I'll have a, a, a blanked out map and I can put dots on it, but they're kind of meaningless when you can't see any of the uh, features on the map. In this mode, it's going to be very difficult to get into any shrines at all, uh, because in order to get into any shrines, I'll have to shield clip in. For some shrines, it'll be easy, and for others, it may be difficult or even impossible to do. This means that ultimately, I'm going to have very low hearts, very low stamina, and remember, all of the stamina producing foods are going to be finite as well, so there's only a certain number of times that I can consume some stamina potion or whatever trying to climb a cliff so this is going to be a big a big change in the game all of the equipment that you get in uh blessing shrines uh is not going to be available or difficult to attain so things like the climbing gear i don't know i might not be able to get it at all the barbarian armor again shock resistant armor uh, each of these things is going to be difficult if not impossible to get so that's going to be a real big challenge ancient cores and giant ancient cores uh collecting some of these things from treasure chests inside of shrines is some of the most effective ways to get these rare items and without being able to get into shrines or having a lot of difficulty getting into shrines there's going to be a big barrier to uh, obtaining these items Especially if there's only a certain percentage of uh, getting a, an ancient core drop out of a guardian. If I wipe out all the guardians and I don't have enough ancient cores to uh, buy the ancient bow or to upgrade my Sheikah Slate, then sorry, that's the end of it. Can't do it. You'll have to play the game without it. Without the ability to teleport, this means I'm going to be relying on my horse a lot. Uh, everywhere I go... I'm going to have to ride my horse there. Either that or use the travel medallion. So I, I will be allowed to use the travel medallion. I understand that I will be able to fast travel to Divine Beasts once the Divine Beasts are activated. There's a couple of different variations of these glitches that you could use. Uh, if you choose to not deactivate time, in other words, you do have Blood Moons, then the Shrine of Resurrection will be available as a travel point. But... Uh, in the mode that I play, uh, I will not have the Shrine of Resurrection available as a travel point. I do have a couple of rules about the No Towers game style as well. Uh, so one of them is uh, no ancient horse gear. So if you have to actually walk your way to a stable or keep whistling and keep your horse in range, then that's going to really tighten the bond that you have with your horse. I may choose to abandon this rule. I'm not sure if this is going to be something that uh, makes gameplay better or worse. Ultimately, if you uh, don't have your horse available and if it becomes a big inconvenience to uh, constantly chase for your horse all the time, and you end up walking across Hyrule, I'm pretty sure that will make the game less fun, not more fun. Uh, and in that case, then it'll just be time to just go get the ancient horse gear and, and be done with it. Another rule to play is the infinite hearts and stamina glitch is off limits, I think. So this might be one of those ones where I might backtrack on it as well. I'm actually pretty sure 
that if I play the game all the way through with three hearts and one stamina wheel and, and whatever shrines I can actually shield clip into, that will probably, I think I'm going to discover it makes the game less fun, not more fun. So if I'm capable of shield clipping into the shrine in Hiteno Village and activating the glitch where I can get my infinite hearts and stamina, I may just do that. But uh, I, I will only do so if I discover that the game is not fun to play uh uh, by obeying the rules. So we're, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Just a reminder, these two glitches are actually independent of each other. So you could actually mix and match to either one you want if you want to play a game like this on your own. The easy one is clipping out of the Shrine of Resurrection so you have no time and no blood moons. I think that that one actually is very likely to make the game much more fun because of the finite resources. And if you are able to do the, uh, the easy glitch and gain a lot, maybe you just want to uh, try playing a game using that style. Whereas the very very hard glitch is skipping the towers. You have to shield clip into all four of the shrines on the Great Plateau, and I can tell you right now, it took me probably 20 hours of gameplay to, to do it. It was just a nightmare of repetitive, tedious. I had a really hard time. If you're able to do it, great. What do you gain for it? You gain the restriction that you don't have towers and shrines. So arguably, this is a lot of work and a very difficult glitch to achieve in order to attain a handicap that doesn't make the game any more fun. It actually makes the game worse. So most likely, if anybody's going to uh, watch this video and try to be inspired by it and go and play a game of your own, most likely the best choice for you to do is skip the Shrine of Resurrection and actually do activate the towers. At the beginning of the game in the Shrine of Resurrection, you do want to open the door, but don't walk out. Because the opening cutscene starts the time off at 5.15 a.m. If you later want to come back and do Mazkoshia without activating time, you're going to have to fly your way back into the Shrine of Resurrection without touching the floor, pick up your one-hit obliterator, go and uh, beat Mazkoshia. Now, I don't actually know yet if that's possible to do at all, because if you don't activate towers, are you going to be able to get into the Mazkoshia Shrines I don't know. It's yet to be seen. So I imagine it's going to take several episodes before we actually get to the point where I'm actually doing that. Uh, so that's probably a long way off before that question actually gets answered. Is it even possible to do Mazkoshia when you skip the uh, opening cutscene at the Shrine of Resurrection? Right here at the beginning of the game in the Shrine of Resurrection, we're going to be using the scope clip method to clip out of the Shrine of Resurrection. I did not invent this. I learned it by watching YouTubers do this for speedrunning and then look up some tutorials on how to uh, actually do it. So you've got to activate your scope once. Notice when we look at the map, the Shrine of Resurrection is orange, so it appears on the map, but it does not appear as a travel gate. So we notice if we don't activate the door and we clip out of the shrine, then we'll never be able to get back in here again. Now, there are a couple of different places where you can clip out of the Shrine of Resurrection. If you watch the speedrunners, you'll see them do it in a different part of the uh, space where it's winter outside. And I found that area to be difficult because as soon as you start taking cold damage, uh, you have to really hurry up and get out of there. So I, I found that to be more difficult. This space over here, the, uh, the green area, I found to be... Uh, an easier place to clip out of the Shrine of Resurrection. You notice up at the top here, the uh, the trick is you have to crouch as you walk. So you actually have to let go of climbing and uh, crouch and walk until you're in a space that's too short for you to be able to stand up. And then when you stand up and jump, you can actually clip out of the uh, uh, through the ground to the outside world. Now normally, the old man, uh, if you pick up this apple, he's going to harass you and say, what are you doing? And when you pick up this uh, torch, he says, what are you planning to use that thing for? And so I find it it's pretty enjoyable just to be able to grab these things without having to listen to him. And there he is, still standing there and gazing at the hill, waiting for little Link to come out of his hibernation spot.
Creepy. So after you clip out of the Shrine of Resurrection, if you just walk back toward it, then you'll activate the opening cutscene. You notice that since time has not begun yet in the game, you actually can't sit by the fire. You walk up to the fire and there is no prompt to sit. I thought it would be fun to activate the opening cutscene by approaching it from here. And there we go. I like how he runs back into the Shrine of Resurrection before he runs back out. What's this? No Link? Hope you uh, don't mind the fact that somebody stole your apple. After activating the opening cutscene, you notice that the Shrine of Resurrection becomes an active teleportation spot. Still, you cannot sit by the fire. That's funny. He can't see me when I'm here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> Sneak strike with a stick. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Almost got me! Hey, buddy! Yeah, notice it's only after activating the Great Plateau Tower and getting off of the Great Plateau Tower that the time first appears. We're able to see the time and we're able to see that time has progressed because I activated the opening cutscene and then ran down here to activate the tower. Load the game back inside the Shrine of Resurrection. Open the door. So I can get back in. And once again, clip out. Now let's head straight to the tower without activating time. And we notice it's 5.15 a.m. Exactly the time that it 
would be if we just got out of the Shrine of Resurrection. Let's also pay notice to the fact that this tower shadow is not moving, not, e not even a little bit. Normally, when you stand in the shadow, you can very easily see the shadow of the tower moving. This tower is perfectly, perfectly stationary. Let's see what happens if I rest by a fire. Rest until noon. Wake up at 5.15 a.m. How about night? Five fifteen a.m. again. So in this file, I'll be able to use towers and shrines, but I won't be able to teleport to the Shrine of Resurrection, and there's no time and no blood moons. And that's where we're going to stop it for today, and we'll see you all next time.